We're pleased to bring you the seventh episode in the History of Smyrna series. Today we're here in the heart of the depot district where our community finds its roots. The depot served as a refueling station for the railroad and tracts of land were offered for public purchase. Smyrna was incorporated in 1869. The stories you hear today are part of the fabric of our community, weaving together the past and the present. This is our town and our history. We invite you to enjoy the history of Smyrna. I'm Coon Victory, and I've lived around Smyrna my whole life. I'm Patsy Brown, and I came to Smyrna in 1960 when I married my husband, Bill. I'm Denny Hoover. I was born in January 1939 in downtown Smyrna, right where my little shop is today. <laughs> I'm Tommy Hart, uh, 71 years old, been in Smyrna every day of that, <laughs> and glad to be here. I'm a John Norman Barnett III, my grandfather and father I'm named after, and I've been in Smyrna since 1954. When you were born. That's it. <laughs> I'm Ron Alley. I'm the uh, founder of a nonprofit called Carpe Artista, and I've been here in Smyrna since 1995. I'm Raquel Peebles, and I was born in Smyrna, and my grandmother um, purchased the property on Nora Peebles Lane back in 1907, and so our family's been here since prior to then. I'm Marion Appleton. I was born 1941, and I was raised at Hilltop. Well, we appreciate y'all being here today, and we're going to be discussing about what Smyrna used to be, and uh, we were talking about Smyrna. So, uh, Raquel, did you attend Smyrna High School? I did. I was the first graduating class of Smyrna High, where it is located now, class of 1989. About how many students was in your graduating class? Um, in our class, it was like 206, but that's after we split with Laverne. So Laverne High School opened that same year. So probably half of, of the class was at Smyrna. So it was 206. Ron, you said you came here in the 90s. Where did you go to school? Um, I grew up in Chattanooga area. So um, Hickson and uh, went to school, Hickson High School there, and I'm a, a UT Chattanooga grad, so. Miss Thee, did you go to Smyrna here? Smyrna Rosenwald. Smyrna Rosenwald. Mm -hmm. About how many students was in your class, do you recall? About 30 something. About 30 something, mm -hmm. yes. Was it the Rosenwald on college? Or the, they, didn't they name the one on the old highway, Rosenwald? When they first I was at the, the old one on college. The old one on college, where the park is. Right. Okay. As you go up the hill. Uh, yes. John, where did you go to school? What I year? went to the rock school from first through the sixth. I had kindergarten at Metalon Homes. Had a room there, and they had kindergarten. Did you go to, and then um, rock school, and then the high school, which is the middle school now. Now, 1960 is when they opened it up, and 59 was the last class for full 1 through 12 at the old rock school. About, about how many graduated with you? I'm guessing 70, 80. Uh, man, I guess Ballpark. So. Yeah. Tommy, you, you, your school days? Uh, I graduated in 69. I should have graduated in 68, but I had such a good time that I wanted to hang around <laughs> another year. <laughs> What, what grade was that uh, that you wouldn't well, hang around to? My years? sophomore year, I was convinced by the report card that uh, I was going to be around another year. <laughs> and so, as it turned out, it was uh, probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. Uh, Who was the principal then? Mr. Mack. I'm surprised that he didn't keep up with your grades. <laughs> uh... He oh, did. Yeah. He kept okay. up with everything. That's what All I thought. All he did walk across the street. He knew where he lived. Exactly right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Denny, your school days? I went to Smyrna from the 1st through the 11th grade. And in 57, I went to M.T. 
to Murfreesboro Central because there wasn't enough students to teach calculus or physics at Smyrna, and I wanted to take my last two years of math and science. But if I'd have graduated from Smyrna, I think there was 28 of us mm. in uh, my graduating class. And Murfreesboro at Central High School, which was the main school in Murfreesboro, was only 267 of us my graduating class up there in 57. And that was the whole city of Murfreesboro? That was the whole city plus the county kids that they could get to come in. You had Kittrell, Las Casas, Walter Hill, and Smyrna. Christiana. Christiana, and that was it. Yeah. Rockvale, Negro. Well, Rockvale, Negro. Rockvale, Negro. Yeah. Right. Right yeah. then, Christiana each didn't little, have a high school. Each little community mm -hmm. had their own school. They had their own little grocery store, and they had the churches that back that time. Uh, Patsy, where did you go to school? Uh, grade school, Tucker's Crossroads in Wilson County, one through eight, and then Lemon High School. About how many <laughs> graduated with you? I think it was about 130. About 100. Mm -hmm. So I got out during some of these times, and it was in 62. In our class, we were the first one to, uh, Raquel mentioned, uh, no, no, John mentioned uh, going over to uh, Hazelwood there to what is the Smyrna Middle School today, which was our high school. And we were the first class to have over 100 students at that time in my class, and 94 of us graduated. So, so Smyrna has really grown, and I assume today they probably got four or 500 kids in the graduating class just at Smyrna High School, not counting Stewart's Creek or Laverne. Mm -hmm. So, but back then our town was something like when I was in school was about 7,500 people. Now, Denny, a little while It was 300 when I was, in 1939. 1939 was about 300 people. Mm -hmm. I think we had like seven, eight kids that lived in town that went to school. Everybody else came in, bust in. Now, if you went your last year to Central, did you drive? How'd you get there? Well, I rode the Greyhound bus some, I hitchhiked some, I Rode and a then meal? I had a car for a while. <laughs> I finally got my first car. <laughs> Did you? Yep. Was it was it difficult to leave Smyrna, where you knew everybody, and go into that new school? Not really. Uh, the county was so small in those days that you, I knew every I knew a lot of people in Murfreesboro, and I, and I started the MTSU in fall of '57. There was only 1,700 students in the whole college in 1957. Wow. And over 50,000 today. Whatever it is. Yeah. Then he had to travel the old National Highway then, didn't you? Well, no, because 54 is when they came in here. But if okay. you rode the Greyhound bus, it came off, <coughs> it came into Smyrna. It got right there at the Ridley Chevrolet, the little restaurant we had. And then it went through Walter Hill because it always went by the VA hospital. It didn't take the four lane in. It went by Walter Hill. And I can remember that growing up in Chattanooga. My older brother, who's significantly older, was attending Belmont in Nashville and I rode the Greyhound bus to visit him one weekend and we took every stop, you know, every small town and Smyrna was one of them. And I had, I still had to walk about six blocks because the bus wouldn't, <coughs> back bus then the terminal was down there where the, where you get your taxes and tags and stuff now, back in those days. You were talking about going to school. John, you live, I guess, close to school. How did you, did you walk? Uh, Walter, bicycles, they had long racks, and there would be 40 or 50 bicycles always pushed up, standing up in the bike racks. And our patrol boys, if you walked, so they'd wear a little Sam Brown and have a little flag on a stick. You'd get in a long line, and we obeyed back then. But uh, we, they'd walk us down to Ross Drive and then turn us loose. Hmm. Tommy, I assume you walked, or how'd you get school? <laughs> uh, well, the first six years, well, about the first four, we lived right there by the school. And, of course, that was no problem. Uh, I used to ride to the printing shop with my dad because that was uh, after we moved. I'd, I'd ride with him down to the shop and hang around there till time school started at eight o'clock and uh, walked across the street yeah went across the street and then, of course walking to the high school was just down the corner you know Raquel do you recall how you went to school we rode on the bus rode the bus like I did I rode the bus now Miss Thee did 
Did, I, did you ride the bus during your day? Well, grammar school, you know, I lived, we owned, my grandmother owned the property where David Uri School is. Mm -hmm. So we would walk to Rosenwald, mm -hmm. but then we'd catch the school bus and go to Holloway and Murfreesboro, the high school. Yeah. Ron and Chattanooga, I assume you had buses down there. We did, but I lived close enough, we walked. You walked. So, yeah. You was out in the country, I guess. I was, yes. You had a bus? Well, yeah, we did have a bus. One and then one, one mule and wagon, but <laughs> we had a little short bus, and and and, and we called it. Uh, they pick us some of us up and and drop some off, and we called it riding around. Yeah. And and one day we were riding around and pick this lane, and the <clears throat> growth was you know coming over this way, and a little green snake. <laughs> the driver, a little green snake fell off of a bush and onto that steering wheel. And I thought to my soul, we would have a wreck right there, but he handled it really well. But that was a lot of fun. But I remember riding the school bus to Murfreesboro, to Holloway, and we couldn't talk. Oh, And no. I loved to talk, and I got in trouble, <laughs> and I always had to ride, sit behind the bus driver. But then I talked to the bus driver. <laughs> so I didn't see why that, but, but anyway, now I see the kids that just hear them talking, but, we used to have to have a book or something like that. We couldn't, all that noise wasn't on the bus. That wouldn't work today, would it? No. They wouldn't, they wouldn't pay they any more attention. They wouldn't let me ride the bus that you're talking about because I was supposed to be in Smyrna. So I had to, to go to Central, I had to, I, I couldn't ride a bus. I had, okay. had to make sure I got there myself for some reason or another. So, so you went to Holloway for what grades did you go there? Ninth. Okay. So Ninth Rosenwald two. stopped at, at eight. Eight. Mm -hmm. So high school, Started. you ended up going to Holloway for right. what? four years. Back then, Miss D, uh, about how many students was at Holloway? All together? Mm hmm. Wasn't very many. Wasn't very many. But I can, can recall. Holloway had as good a sports program as anybody in the county. They could play with anybody. Right, we had they, good they were good sports, good sports through there. Right. Okay. Uh, you mentioned that you had to find your own transportation. You recall your first vehicle? My first vehicle? Yes. Oh, I was an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> See, we didn't the, have a car. Today, mm -hmm. most of the kids, when they turn 16 years old, they got a vehicle sitting in the driveway waiting on them. That wasn't the case during my, my days. That was the reason I asked you about a, when you recall your first vehicle, so you was on up as an adult when you had your first vehicle. Ra Raquel, your first vehicle? Um, I do. I actually had a, it was a Chevrolet um, Caprice. Well, you was on up in the world then, Chevrolet Caprice, yeah. Ron, you remember your first vehicle? I, I do. It was passed down to me. I came from a big family, so... Uh, I have uh, two brothers, three sisters, and so there were six of us. But I, we got one passed down when I was in college, and it was an Opal Cadet. Oh. <laughs> John, what was your first one? I uh, built a two-seater dune buggy out of a Volkswagen. It was a dune, dune buggy. We changed the body, and it looked like a very, is a mini T. Big fenders. Do you do a lot of work on it? Uh, my uncle Bill helped me do the welding oh, yeah. and all, and Honest John yeah. helped me with the engine. Yeah. Tommy, you remember your first vehicle? Uh, yeah, it was a '61 Ford Falcon, and bought it down on <clears throat> Lafayette Street in Nashville for two hundred dollars, and that was the first time I had ever driven a standard shift car on the way home. And, uh, but I made it. <laughs> Do you jerk any? A few times. <laughs> Danny, you recall your first vehicle? My first vehicle was a 54 Ford Sunliner convertible. I bought it in the fall of 57, 56 for $1,200, where the donut shop is, downtown Smyrna, from Lytle Bowen, mm -hmm. is who I bought it through. And my daddy was out of town when I bought it. I, money, my money, I'd saved up taking papers. And when daddy came back off a little trip doing antiquing, he raised sane because I bought my own car. <laughs> it was a convertible. 
Is it convert? Did you get a convertible? lot of girls to ride with you back then? <laughs> well, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> You've been thinking, your thoughts been pretty good up until that question. <laughs> you know, Let me say, let's put it this way. When I started dating Dot, I, I wasn't allowed. But when I was at Central, my nickname was Moose. <laughs> and that was the Moose Mobile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pat, do you recall your first vehicle? A lot of people don't realize that Smyrna used to have a Ford dealership. Where was that, Tommy? In, uh, when the Smyrna Service Center yeah. was on this side of town down there on the corner, yeah. they, they sold new cars. That's where his came from. Uh, well, that became, it's been for Fords who had a lot over there. Okay. But the first Ford dealership in Smyrna, it was next to the, it's where the snake pit is, next to the old fire hall mm -hmm. in the community building there. And when it burnt about 1928, 29, somewhere back in there, they never opened another Ford dealership up, but they opened a little, uh, like a Ford tractor and stuff for a little while. But that was the original Ford dealership in Smyrna. Tommy mentioned the uh, service center, and the service center uh, that I can recall, the first one was there, were close to where the donut shop is that today. Was a service center, yeah. right. And then it caught on fire about 1956, somewhere yeah. in there. I remember I was 57. Uh, I, 57, I think we were in the. I was in the second grade. But I remember I, we was up at football field and we saw all this black smoke, and then they moved across the the uh, other side of town uh, on the corner uh, Joe B's there where now. Joe B's is is today. Now the funeral home, Daddy's funeral home, it sits right behind there that Joe B used for storage. Mm -hmm. That building sat on that lot and in 1916 Uncle Walter King, they had it moved and faced Division Street. Originally it faced Garrett's store down there across where the railroad track is. Well, but there's an old Citrum and everything still on that lot when we were kids, and it stayed empty till Mr. Boyd and Johnson and Lytle Hodge built a building. Back then, your ancient times, Denny. <laughs> <laughs> what, was, what was some of the? <laughs> you remember John I. Wade? Right. Okay, mm -hmm. John I. Wade. Lemonade made in shade, stir with spade, and made by John I. Wade. Every Saturday, he sit on the tracks at the railroad right. station, so was selling lemonade or fish soup. Wasn't it? Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> now I've heard, I've, I've heard of him. <clears throat> what was, <clears throat> Denny? What was some of the first restaurants or grocery stores that you can recall uh, in Smyrna? Well, Mr. Johnson had a grocery store right there uh, <laughs> next to Coleman's Hardware. And then that would be next to where the uh, uh, the, the, vi the videos the, thing. The, well, the, there was the, really Chevrolet. Then their little restaurant at the bus station was. Then Johnson's grocery store, and then the Smyrna Hardware. That was all just one big building like this. Well, it's bigger than it is now. And then, uh, unbeknownst to most anybody in this building, down there where the Elder Church is going on Rocky Spring, like behind the, just past the storage building where the little church is. Mm -hmm. The road used to come Rocky Spring, used to cross the railroad track right there at, in years and years ago. And when I was a kid, there was still a grocery store. Two, you probably may remember the little two-story grocery store down there below Elder's Church on Rocky Spring. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Across from Miss Queen's house. Right. That was the original grocery store probably in Smyrna it, and it's been gone gosh right. 60 years or so along it wasn't nothing yeah. but cokes and all when I was a kid but a road went across the railroad That's track where, there. right there where it came out right there where it, uh, the Texaco station used to be that's where the road used to there was a cross in there one in Smyrna and one up here on the end so Springs. technically there wasn't uh, it wasn't a bridge there well, there was a bridge across Hart's Branch and then right above it you cut across the railroad track and then the other crossing was down there where Mr. Stalin's was to get up to the Moore House. Yeah, yeah. You know, you couldn't get to the Moore House if the creek was up unless you went across the railroad track down there. So was the um, the little store that you're talking about, was it on that lot, that vacant lot before Harts Branch? It was right up next to the railroad, just like the railroad tracks here, 
the store sat right beside it. It's, it's yeah. narrow. It, my gosh, it was a oh. two-story old building. So Mr. Hager built furniture or something right along Mr. there. Mr. Hager had yeah. his grocery. He had one right there across from where. Uh, Storage building? Second Billie Jean, where Billie Jean lived. Over at the big old boarding house that was there. Yeah. Originally, we lived in the boarding house where uh, next door to where mother and daddy live now, the big old boarding house where Robin Mullins lives. Mm -hmm. There was a boarding house there that three families lived in. That's where I lived when I was born. Okay. But going back to the grocery store, then we had Moore's, Francis, and a lot of then, And then we yeah. had a Mr. Johnson store up on Hilltop was probably pretty, probably just about as old as one of the oldest stores is the Johnson store in Smyrna. They were like cousins or something. But Mr. Johnson store at Hill, the rock store up there, was, that was there doing, as long as the highway's there, I guess, where you cut off and came into Smyrna. Then Telefero's Market was across the road. Was yeah, that later that was on down the road? That was later it? years. Yeah. Later on down yeah, the road. Yeah, that was later on. There was a little grocery store, I mean, a little filling station there with a bus stop, didn't it? Was it a rock building? Station. Yeah, no, the rock building was Mr. Johnson's. Yeah, that was across the what, street. And where is that in relation to what's there now? It's a vacant lot. <laughs> I the think corner. there's two vacant lots. Well, right there where the street, but in and spring goes the new road. Okay, that's oh, where it's set. All right. But Mr. There Johnson on the, on the right hand oh, yeah. side going up. Mr. Okay. Johnson used to have it on the other side there. And then Mr. Warwick had a garage underneath it. Isaac. Mr. Isaac right. Warwick. Yeah. yeah. When uh. Talking yes, about John. crossing the bridge there at Hart's Branch, uh, I've always been told there were several homes along the railroad tracks that the railroad let people live in, and the foundations are still. Well, when we, when we were growing up, there were section houses for the track where the people that worked on the railroad lived there. And when you cut, if you're going out of Smyrna, as soon as you cross the bridge at Hart's Branch, you turn right, went down a little gravel road up there, and there were probably six or seven, maybe eight, Houses, but the people that worked on the railroad they were called section houses. Okay. There were some at Florence too, and they had like five miles or seven miles of track that they had to keep up. But the railroad furnished them houses. And later on, when they cut those, when they started doing the main work out of Nashville or somewhere like that, they rented those houses to people. So I used to carry papers up there when I was probably in the late 40s, early 50s. Uh, a little bit later on down the road, uh, Tommy, do you recall some of the businesses that was downtown that, that, that Denny might have, that wasn't here when Denny was here, or he was talking about? Uh, so I'm trying to think of when Denny wasn't here. 60, 60 62. to 82. 62 60. to 82, I was pretty well gone. Uh, but I can recall, you know, Marilyn Weekly's was there. Yeah. I can recall the Rutherford Courier was was there. Then what was in the, in the next set of buildings there where Ron is today? Do you recall what was there? Or classic cleaners. Yeah. Yeah, classic cleaners. Mr. Earl had an office yeah. there in the front, didn't he? Uh, yeah. He, he was right there next to where Marilyn Weekly's was. Ben Franklin yeah. and. Well, that was later. Ridley Coleman Ridley opened a little yeah, place right there together. He was inside Classic Cleaners behind the glass panels. Yeah. When you go in the front door, he was on your right in a little office. Yeah, Earl built that down there for the uh, insurance company. Well, you know, there's a Travis. there's a picture right here of the Smyrna City Council meeting at City Hall in the late 50s, early 60s. And uh, I think the space that they were in was probably about 14 square feet. I think the room was eight by six. You know, it, it's just unbelievable how much, how much business a town ends up having to do. And back in those days, my grandfather was the city clerk. You remember that? No, uh, Mr. 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 Coleman was the first one that I can remember. Mr. Uh, Howard Coleman Howard was the first Coleman. one that well, I can remember. Howard took my grandfather's place. Okay. What was your grandfather's name? We, William Posey Gwynn. Okay. Oh, yeah. Mr. Gwynn. Posey. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, How are you related to the Gwynns? Your mother? My mother oh, was a right. Gwynn. Yeah, yeah, I forgot that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I spent a lot of time down there at the, in that little yeah. cubicle there, and that was City Hall. 
When I first got on the city council back in the 70s, our meeting room, you mentioned that one, our meeting room was probably 10 by, 10 by 20 was about the size of our meeting room and we had a desk and we sat in there and we met at five o'clock in the afternoon and we were through by six. It didn't take us long. We didn't have the microphones, we didn't have TV, we didn't have that. We had our agenda when we got ready to go in. Well, you didn't have to do anything but say, yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and where was that? That was where the, the, was the old city hall, where the, the fire department's, I guess that's the office for the fire department, Raquel, there where, Mr., where Chief Bill Coverson's office is. As soon as you walk in on the right-hand side is what we had. That was the city hall at that time. Well, upstairs at the old fire hall was the original, where the city hall was when I was growing up, the two-story white building. Yes. Where the, yeah. That's next to uh, and, where the snake pit is. And or, next to Mulligan's. Or, or the city uses that today for uh, assembly hall. Yeah. Is that yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. John, you recall some of the business that was a little bit later on? Well, I got a picture here. I know that Miss Diddy, Uncle Frank's mother-in-law, it was town and country. It was a little store and they had Big yellow. Yeah. And then you go in and buy used clothes. And I've got a picture here. Peyton and company was... Uh, original store, then it became Lawrence Groceries. That's where Mike Mitchell's print shop is now. Right. Now that building was built by William King, which was the first undertaker in Smyrna in 1864. When he moved over here, William, I started to bring a picture of him. I got a picture of the first, he was the first undertaker. He moved over here from Nolensville in Smyrna in, back in the 50s, late 19, 1850s. And that was his woodworking shop. And nobody believed me, but John, Jerome Dempsey was kind of interested in the building several years ago. And I told Jerome about that. And when he looked it up and researched it, he found that William King's name was the first owner of that building in the records at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. So that was actually, and it was got a full basement in it. But that building that Miss Moore was in was really built by Uncle William King, great Uncle William King. Mm -hmm. When you talked about Dr. Ship's office, I remember going to Dr. Ship's office right there where the Rutherford Curry, that little building there. Little small okay, building. now that that might have see that I'm talking about in the forties when when Dr. Ship had to, now when he got down there, then that was the bright spot restaurant at that time. Oh, when okay. you're talking, remember there was the bright spot restaurant right. had the big house in between them, right, with the pretty fish pond behind it. <laughs> Uh, the Lawrence Grocery, do you remember it being in the house, in the, it was Railroad Salvage, it was a nightclub, Tommy, a uh, sandpiper. Sandpiper. Okay. For a while. 68. Okay. Sandpiper. Where was that? Sand uh, right there in Mitchell's print shop. Uh, on really? the corner yeah. of uh, and Gil's Washington. Grocery was in there at one Gil's time. Was that a second store? Yeah. yeah. And, and then your granddaddy's bank was right down to... Yeah, well, uh, Couple doors there's down. about three. There's a Western Auto, I believe, was right there too, between Nicholson Drug. Yeah, and that's where Wilson Photography. Is. Yes, yeah. uh, he's taken up two places. I there think, wasn't right? anything in there between the bank and the two-story. It's kind of like that picture of the men standing in front. I've got a postcard about a lot older than those are. And then it was there's there. nothing there except the one building. Yeah, no, and, no buildings. And then it was Nicholson <laughs> Drug Store. Yeah, and here's Nicholson right. Drug. Yeah, and. Uh, this one is Pan Am and the Chevrolet. Is Pan Am the bus company? Like Pan American? No, no I think Pan Am was what Amoco yeah, was, was before. Station. Pan Am. They had little pumps out there as you first went in the front end of the building. Yeah. <coughs> That's what became Amoco. Okay. The, the uh, Gulf Station was there. and it seemed like, did trailways come through Smyrna too? Continental yeah. yeah. trailways buses. Yeah. They had to. Those Santa Cruises used to stop in there. Uh, Raquel, do you recall some of the first stores back? We we getting a little bit closer to, to today's time. Mm -hmm. Raquel, do you recall <laughs> some of the grocery stores or stores or? Um, was there a CB's? CB over by the Smyrna Assembly on that side. Patterson's. And Mr. Patterson. Patterson yeah. come up. And P and B was yeah, you know, I remember when he P &B. moved off Hilltop and P and B started in y'all's age. And the Gills built a new store out there on the corner. Okay. 
Oh, I wish I could tell a story about that, but I better not. <laughs> you say no problem. Is it the language? No, it's just the Time. scenario. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do you recall who the first policemen were during your time? Um, she didn't get in any trouble. She didn't know. <laughs> no. Steve, did, did we have policemen? Yeah, we had one. We had Steve. one with the st walk with Mr. The Casey. Yeah. Mr. Casey. Yeah. Okay. That was one I remember. They lived over there in the boarding house, mm -hmm. the Casey house. Okay. Then we're moving back up. John? Your time. Who was uh, the first one? Called him Big Chief. It was Mr. Joyner. Yeah, Chief Joyner. And uh, I think Mr. Sellers might have been a deputy for him. Bell, I think was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Then a little bit later on, Tommy. Oh, uh, same thing. No, I was. Uh, Bob was the first uh, chief of police I remember. I remember he used to. He had a time clock there on the wall at City Hall, and he'd punch that every few hours. You know to let them know that he checked in. But he walked it then that time, didn't oh, he? Oh, it didn't have a police car in 58. Thought. Yeah. Mr. Casey walked with that time clock strapped around him with a key, and he had four or five boxes around town, and he'd have to turn his key in each one of those boxes back in the old days. But Smyrna wasn't big. You know, it didn't take you five minutes to walk the whole town. <laughs> it was only four or five blocks, yeah. you know, uh, off what's Murfreesboro Road, few on this side and a few over here, and that was it. They were still shaking doors back then, and they'd leave sometimes a business card stuck in the door, they found one open. That's when Westmoreland and a few of them others were yeah. kind of grew. Yeah. Ooh, Mr. Basham. Mr. Uh, Basham had the grocery st old grocery over at, store right there. Where where the, uh, at the barber cross, shop. Right there across the yeah. right, right. barber shop. In the Hager Street. Yeah. And, and originally, Mr. Basham had the grocery store at Rocky Spring Road in the old highway. Right there across from the station, filling station there. And then he moved to Smyrna and then he went down on Murfreesboro Road towards Mount View later Is that on. the one that was Pendergrass? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Yeah. But, yeah. <coughs> yeah, but Mr. Basham went and lived out there in the back yeah. of the store. He lived upstairs at the store in Smyrna, too. I don't think we've ever mentioned Loafer's Corner. Where was Loafer's Corner? <laughs> <laughs> old, old Highway and Rock Springs Road. Okay. okay. It's called Loafer's Corner. It was Piercy's Market when yeah. when you were, uh, by the time you got here, 60. I would say. It was, was it Pendergrass also, two different names? Pendergrass. And then Pendergrass and then Piercy. Now, I saw a picture the other day on Smyrna website. Loafer's Corner, Caddy Corner, was a white house building. And they had a little sign over the corner of it, said, over the top, said Loafer's Corner. I'd never seen that before. Uh, okay, here's a question that since I'm a quiz question. Oh, no. <laughs> how many miles is it to Nashville and how many miles is it to Murfreesboro from Loafers Corner or Rocky Spring Road? 20 and 10. Nope. That's at Hazelwood. Oh. <laughs> what is it, the same amount? Okay, if you want to know, go to Sam Davis' home. And you know where the little craft store used to be? The little log craft building used to be on the left-hand side? There's a road marker out there. And that road marker, it's got 13 miles to Murfreesboro, 17 miles to Nashville. It came off of Loafers Corner. Well, you are full of Smyrna trivia. <laughs> <laughs> you really oh, are. Right. Wow. What's the oldest <laughs> restaurant in Smyrna? I don't know. Still the oldest restaurant that's still operated by the same group of people or the same company, and it's the only one that I know of. What about uh, uh, the fish place down before you get to the funeral home? Uh, uh, what? Captain D's. Yes. Captain D's? Yes. Captain right. D's. Now, there's a lot of other restaurants that still are restaurants, but they're not still owned by the same group of people. Captain D's came in here right after they built the road through there in 54, probably 57, 58. Uh, now, Mr. Davis had the oldest, one of the oldest little drive-ins. But the oldest drive-in is where, right across the street over here, where the car lot is. Is that Terry, was that Terry's? Okay. Daddy it, it and I and another fellow. before that. Yeah. Well, we, Daddy and I and another fellow built that building when we owned the farm here, 1955. 
and then Walter Loggins rented it mm -hmm. and started it up. But that was that was a little bit older than than Davis. Davis came in on the other end of town, but about a little bit later. But this little the car lot over here was the oldest drive-in in Smyrna. There you go. Dairy Dip had a ten for ninety-nine cents. The little crystals, they come double wrapped, and it's amazing that a dime a burger. And that was when I was driving still, and say in the late sixties. When when did the Castle and Dungeon come in? Seventy-seven. Okay. Seventy-seven, and then was there how long? Do you remember? Oh, not over two or not three years. Long. It wasn't that long. Is yeah, that where the Southern Bank is today? Remember it? Right in there? Yeah. 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 Right yeah. Well, what was the movie? We had the movie, too. That was still Regal over, Theater. Regal Theater yeah, is still Regal. over there next to the, yeah. next to where the Ice House was. Remember where we had right. to get ice? Yeah. Uh -huh, yes. And Dr. Good, Dr. Goodall opened a little office in the back right. of it, and mm -hmm. then he built a little hospital. It was a little restaurant there, also on the yeah. corner. Sam, Sam, Davis was, Grill. Yeah, Grill. Sam Davis Grill. Yeah, Sam Davis Grill. Yeah. Yeah, and then the, Dr. Dr. the sign Dr. still says Theater Grill on uh, up, but up the, there, the purity but sign. There was, and then Dr. <coughs> Goodall was behind there on that same building. We mentioned, one of y'all mentioned the Medlone home a while ago. Why was a, who built the Medlone home? The government. the government built it. Was that for Stewart Air Base personnel? For the enlisted people. Yeah. The officers' buildings was out on the back side on Weekly Lane. But down there was uh, was enlisted people. The Wary and Capehart was the two sections. Capehart was the officer section. Yeah. Oh. yeah, and then Wary was Wary eventually Medellin replaced Homes. Medellin Homes, yeah. and then Smyrna got Medellin Homes and rented those out on the you know as part of the Smyrna business. But I, I can recall the Medellin Home and. Uh, we also, during that time, when, when we had a lot of military people here, when Seward Air Base was here, we had a lot of uh, trailer courts uh, back back then. Uh, a lot of the airmen lived in trailer parks uh, back then. Was Mellon Home integrated with the government when they were there? Yes, I'm pretty sure they were. I'm pretty sure. Well, you know, when I went to Central High School in 57, all the base kids, they had a school bus. They had a Greyhound. The reason I could ride the Greyhound bus is because it always went out to the base and picked up the kids. They got to, the government paid for them to go to Mercerburg, but I had to pay my own ticket. You know, and some of them just went to Howard. Some of them, but we still in '57 we had integrated students at Central High School in Murfreesboro because some of the government kids selected to go to Central. Some of them selected to go to Howard. And you a mean lot Holloway? Of people, a lot of people, uh, Ho Howard, uh, Holloway, Howard's in Nashville. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we used to play Howard football <laughs> occasionally, get whipped. <laughs> but uh, but they, they chose to do that. And a lot of people didn't re didn't even know, didn't, I don't think they even knew that Central actually was integrated back in the mid-50s, late-50s, because the government required it. Good. Yeah. Now, you're talking about Mellon Homes? I can't ever remember, maybe you can, but I can't ever remember. I carried papers there when I was a kid. I never remember it being integrated at all, to be honest with you. I really didn't. Now, later on, after the city took it over, right. you know, they, they did. everything things changed, changed yeah. things uh, in the mid-60s, early 60s. Well, that used to, down there at Medellin Homes, used to be the only baseball field in Smyrna. Oh, yeah. True, sure was. Yeah. And uh, it was, they had a, for the Little League, they had a removable picket fence out there in the outfield so you could hit a home run. But when uh, Babe Ruth and they could run the bases out to 90 feet, uh, they had to take the Little League fence down and if you hit a ball hard enough that would have been a home run, the way you knew it was a home run is because it was past the lights. Right, and, and they could, couldn't find it. Couldn't see <laughs> where it went. You, you mentioned those lights. I think it was something like three light poles yeah. out and one in, maybe in left, one in center, and one in right, and maybe one behind the home plate. But. And poor old Fred Johnson yeah. worked that ground until his tongue hung out. And I don't think he, I doubt if he was ever given a nickel for it. There was a large playground right there between the ball field right. and the building, and 
Those were the days that you could get on the inside of the merry-go-round and go fast enough that people would be slinging out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, long chain, uh, monkey bars, 30 foot high. It didn't make any difference. And you were either smart or thinned out. <laughs> i tell you what I always thought was sad. I remember Smyrna is when they had that ball field back there and Charles Cannon and Napoleon Beatty and all those boys, they couldn't play, but they would like to go and look at them play and they would run them away. Is that right? Right. Because the cannon. Right within 10 feet of it. Yeah. yeah, and they right couldn't, there. they would just love to go and look between the cracks and watch yeah. them play and they would run them away. I always thought that was so sad. Speaking of the cannons, was it ham cannon that pushed the mail? from the railroad car to the post office. Yeah, that was handy. A big two-wheel car. Mm -hmm. He would push the mailbags every day to the back of the post office. And it was when it was moved by the little folk shop instead of, it was two or three doors down originally, wasn't it? Closer yeah, to the service center. Where the big columns are. Okay. By 1964, 65, I was going to MTSU and I had a job working at the post office where uh, the, uh, is it breaking bread or no? The uh, uh, pawn shop. Is. Pawn shop okay. is today, and and I would meet Gerald Lee there at the depot, and we would get that. We he Gerald was work for the post office. He would open the depot up and get that baggage of mail. We had one of those big carts that you pull across. There. As I remember, that gentleman always pushing yeah. it across. And the we street. would push it right between that building where that that in the little folk shop, I guess. It, and, There's a concrete and, ramp, wasn't it, you could roll up the ramp. Exactly. Uh -huh. and, and so we would un bring the mail in there, and, and my job was to clean the post office. And so Gerald would help me get started cleaning the post office if I helped him get the mail across the street. And so we kind of worked together there, so I would get off time to go to the MDSU. So yes, that I remember that, but but uh, Mr. Cannon unloaded, took it from the rail, from the from the train, and put it inside inside the building. Uh, we mentioned these vehicles, y'all's first vehicles. Where did you get your gas? You remember where you got your gas? Uh, Phillips sixty six. We had the Amico Texaco. Uh, Tom McLaughlin. Mr. Ten Penny had the Mobile, and the Gulf, good Gulf. You could get it sometime around twenty cent a gallon. So. Depending on how much change you had in your pocket and where you would get it. Three dollars <laughs> would fill up most cars back in those days. Did you put your own gas in or did somebody else put it in? Uh, we always, well now, ten pennies, they would wash your window and check under your hood. Yeah. I worked at the Gulf Station when Edmund Lewis ran it oh, after, yeah. the, after it burnt down and we just had the Gulf Station and the bus stop there. And I worked for uh, a tank of gas, a dollar an hour, and an oil change a month. Oh, you that did was my good. Deal, right? He was looking good. And Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ross, J. L. Ross, came by one day when I was working there. I was going to college up at MTSU, and he said, uh, "How much you make?" I told him. He said, "I'll pay you a dollar and a half an hour if you don't tell nobody else what what you're making, because I don't pay anybody else that much." And I went to building houses and hauling hay for Mr. Ross. That's when I we were building a subdivision up here. Across on Omni top Hood. of the hill, across yeah. Omni Hood, and then we were building some houses over in Meadowbrook, too. And then your sister later on became his daughter-in-law, is that right. correct? Jean, married Jim. He hadn't mentioned it, but uh, was it Seven Bells? Yeah. Seven Bell Farm. This right was there Seven Bells Ranch at the time. Uh, uh, well, let's hold off on that if you don't mind. I'm going to bring that later on okay. in here, okay? Uh, but, but I'm glad you brought that up, yeah. Uh, back on the restaurants for a minute, Mr. Beatty, I think, did he have the Dairy Pride in Laverne? Him and Gary would have a contest on fundraisers, and one would push the other in a wheelbarrow, yeah. oh. the loser. And he bought Terry's and turned it into a second Dairy Pride, but they take pride in one having to roll the other in a wheelbarrow down the main road and get the picture made. We mentioned Dr. Lowry. Then later on, Dr. Goodall came along. I'm not sure when Dr. Goodall. Well, we had Dr. Had Dr. Gracie. Had Dr. Ship, had Dr. Larry. Dr. Goodall came in here when I was in the sixth grade. That would be what, 48, 49? Something like back in. But anyway, he came in here and opened 50. up when I was in the sixth grade at the old Rock School. Mm, 1950. Probably, yeah. Well, now, Doc Stalins, he was a veterinarian, correct? 
Dr. Stalins was a veterinarian. He wasn't a regular doctor. I bet he'd take uh, why are we talking about that? <laughs> no, he was better than the other one. <laughs> this book right here, this book right here, Dr. Larry was, of all the town people know, the name, the road right out here is named after him. He was also a mayor. He was also a doctor. He was also on the state board. A lot of people don't know, but state board of doctors in a, he met in Nashville. This is his original medical book. Got his name in it and everything from 1901. Did Dr. Lowry, did he grow up here in Smyrna or did he move? Dr. To Lowry, his family, best I can tell, came in here from south of Columbia, part of the family. Part of the family went to Tallahassee, Florida, and owned a big lumber company down there. But uh, Dr. Lyre lived over here across from Action Realty in the White House. Dr. Gracie lived right behind the antique shop. Dr. Ship lived in the big house up there where the fire department is now, or the, where the Definitely. dogs are buried, you know, where the service dogs are buried. That's where his okay. big house sat. Mm -hmm. Dr. Stalins lived over here on Sam Davis Road, the Yellow House. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Goodall, he, had right over he just there. lived with people. When he first got here, he rented a house, and then finally he built a house over there below, right behind Davis's drive-in. Mm -hmm. Was Miss Lowry his daughter or wife or what, the school teacher at the Rock School? She was his daughter. Okay. And I got her, I've got her diaries. Wow. Got three big diary books that every day she's got p people named in Smyrna that came by and visited her, but I've got all her diaries over at my shop. Did you ever sign her paddle? <laughs> no, I oh. just, <laughs> Mr. Mack got enough of that. <laughs> uh, one of the places that, that our residents could go and work that I can recall was a Lane Cedar Mill. And of course, Lane Cedar Mill is located right here on Lowry Street where the apartments are going up today. When did the Lane Cedar Mill come in? Do you recall that? Was it here? It was before, here when I was when you was growing up. When I was growing up. But it uh, it uh, was a place for for uh, quite a few people to work. Plus some residents that came out of Virginia came here and stayed. Uh, the family stayed here. I can recall uh, uh, Patterson. Patterson. The Patterson, Mr. Pat Patterson, and, and then uh, were the Brandons in that Johnny area? Brandon okay. came in and stayed. There and you rent to school with some of those kids. I think Raquel. I think they were in your and Mister's class. Well, when did it close? The uh, mill. When did the mill close? Ninety-three. Something like ninety-three. I think. Yeah, I, I remember it had just been torn down when I came to Smyrna in ninety-five. So, it, or it, it was in the process. And of it being. and it could have been as late as ninety-five. You know. Yeah, I remember. I, I distinctly remember that the the track crossed, or there was the old track crossing the road going into the mill. See, we had the, when we had the printing shop. We used to we'd start to work every morning at seven thirty. Well, the mill blow blew the whistle at seven thirty and seven twenty five, so you could get on in there. And then uh, we'd wait for the lunchtime mill whistle to let us know it was time to go to lunch. And then the mill whistle would blow again at noon when it was time to be back. And we always waited for the whistle at 4 o'clock. That was the one we liked the best. <laughs> but the chimes, like Miss Patsy's phone ringing, they were on top of the Methodist church at noon. Big loudspeakers, you could hear them all over Smyrna playing a melody of a... And you know who those were in... I think Miss Marlowe's mother, maybe, in Ms. her... Miss Coleman. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh -huh. Ms. Nell Daddy Coleman. Will's wife. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, Remember, I took those notes from Marlou. She... Um, I, I wanted her to let us interview her. When we first started this, um, oh, goodness, five years ago, maybe, John Lanza was here. Wouldn't that have been right? about right? And... Um, one day I said, I said to John, I, he came over and did a filming at, at the Senior Citizens. And I said, you know, John, we really need oral histories. 
and uh, he agreed and came back and talked to people people here. Brian Brian wasn't here then, but we started with uh, with Miss Marjorie Hernandez. Mm -hmm. We got her a good good video. I don't know if y'all have ever if, if if it's we've got to find it, but anyway we've got it somewhere to start with this and then. Um, so I went to Marlowe, and she was at Adams by that time, living there. And I said, now, I thought it would, you know, it would work that Marjorie had done it. And I about had her convinced. I said, we want to, we'll, we'll bring the cameras, and we'll come up here, and we'll, we'll talk to you. Next morning, she called, nope, I'm not going to do that. You just bring a pencil and paper up here, and I'll dictate. <laughs> there it is. Uh -huh. Yeah, so, she would have been a good one to get on here. Oh we my goodness, yes. Uh, but she, she, one of the things, she, one of the first things she said was that Smyrna Hardware and Lumber built schools and government buildings. Tom Coleman had a grocery, uh, and that Lane Lane Company was the first first factory, and they made panels for cedar chests uh, here. And of course, Pat and Johnny Brandon had been in the Navy, I believe. Brandon was from Virginia. Pat. Pat's home was in uh, West Tennessee, Dyersburg area. And so they came to Smyrna and married cousins, actually. Marlou uh, married Pat and, and Johnny Brandon married Ann. Ann. Uh, but she had a lot of interesting stuff to tell us. Now, one thing I want to correct her on. Okay. Correct. The first factory in Smyrna <laughs> okay. was Sarah Davis Mills. Okay. And anybody know we had a flour mill in Smyrna at one time? That's the old flour mill, and that's a picture of some of the equipment that was inside the flour mill. And it burnt in 1920, and they went out of business and never opened it up again. Where was it actually located? Actually, it was, you know where Mr. Ross's house was? On, yes. You sure? Well, where, no, where, I'm where not. Larry, where Larry's, go, where Larry's yeah. filling station yeah. is? Yeah. Larry okay. Lee's filling station? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, Mr. Ross, That's where it what did he do for a living? Mr. He, Ross? Carpenter, wasn't he? And he also made cinder blocks to use for foundations. Remember those cinder blocks? I can recall him. He, he was very dark complected. Tall, thin. Tall, thin. And he wore shorts every time I saw him. Every time I saw him, he had shorts over all on. Yeah. But our first factory in Smyrna was Sarah Davis Mills. Mm. Uh, the cotton gin would be dated before the Lane Company too, wouldn't it? Yeah, and the cotton gin came in after this, so Mr. Okay. Hager had the cotton gin. Okay. And in this picture, I, I think you need to start um, making Smyrna trivia, and <laughs> and 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 you can uh, uh, be the MC. I, just, I got enough going on. No, I don't need no more work. As you can see, we have families represented here that was here a long time ago, and, and they helped make Smyrna what it is today. And I'm going to start with the youngest one in the group, and that's Raquel. Raquel is a member of our city council today, and she's a city attorney. When you started practice as an attorney, how many attorneys did we have in Smyrna? Um, five. Five. And how many do we have today? Twenty-five? I was going to say maybe ten. Maybe ten. Maybe doubled yeah. in there. But, but uh, you mentioned earlier about your grandmother. So tell us again about your grandmother. And each one of these families here has a street named after them here in Smyrna. So if you could tell a little something about I your I missed family. one. Okay. Missed we you. didn't get one. Oh, you missed getting the name after? <laughs> you said everybody here, everybody got a the street. street. They <laughs> renamed my street, they, they <laughs> Sam Davis Highway, and did away with it. Now, I understand that uh, they're going to do something with the property down there where the Talaferos, Miss Talaferro lives. Did they, did, if they sold that property, are they rezoning it or something? I, I don't know. I so understand they're going to do gonna something. It's going to be right next to where y'all live. So. Where the old beer joint was on the corner, what was it called? Golden Camel. Golden Camel. Yeah. <laughs> there wasn't much golden about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, how did you know? this name, name that whatever goes in there, yeah. Street Boulevard to Drive need to be named after the, their family. Keep that in mind, Raquel. <laughs> right there, right there. <laughs> Bill Coverson's <laughs> uncle, did they have a picture of him on the wall? Did he get killed in the service? He was gone in the service. Bill Coverson's daddy? Uh, 
this, uh, Mr. Copperson's brother, I guess it would have been. Mike, there was two brothers, wasn't yeah. there? But, Mr. but Bill's daddy lived on Oak yeah, Street yeah, knew, and, uh, nothing. and then they moved up there and where Bill is now. Mr. Williamson, but uh, there was a picture on the wall supposedly. Bill used to put a lot of stuff on his Facebook page. Yeah. Seemed like I recall seeing his uncle showing this is my uncle and he was in honor. They had a picture. I don't know if he got killed during the service or people just keeping up with he him. He might have been like Daddy was. Mother was a regency at Sam Davis' home back in the 50s. Daddy found this doll. He told it was Sam Davis' doll. Well, he convinced the women out there that it was Sam Davis' doll. This is a story that a few people know. And they put it on Sam Davis's bed, and everybody came to visit. They finally, Daddy told them that it wasn't a Sam Davis's doll, and they liked to kill him. <laughs> but for several years, he laid on that bed out there. <laughs> there were a lot of stories told that weren't uh, exactly true. <laughs> Your grandmother lived to be a, a long time. How old was your grandmother when she passed away? She was 98. 98, and she was very well known and very liked and very respected here in Smyrna. She worked for Knox Ridley for, I don't know, maybe 50 years yes. or so. And Miss Nora May, is that correct? Yes, yes. that's okay. my grandmother. Okay. Yeah. An excellent cook. Did you pick up any of that cooking? I did pick up some of it. I went, to, <laughs> I went to school with your, I guess it would be your cousin, Larry. Larry's my uncle. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good athlete. Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. Th then a little later on was the Barnetts. Uh, John, you can tell us a little something about your families, your, your uncles and your granddaddies. Think around Rock Valley area where they were born, but him and his brother moved in, and his brother had a farm where the base housing is, and his was right over Stewart's Creek. And when they, Pearl Harbor got bombed, they decided to buy everything up. And that's when they left the farm and moved into town. But I think my grandfather said he lived upstairs in Hager's store, worked for Hager's running the counter there. And he taught school in Cairo, does that sound right, Denny? It's a little community right there close to the back gate of the air base. And I imagine if you had an education that could spell, read, and write, and all, you were qualified for teachings. I've got a couple of his diplomas from eighth grade and from high school. But uh, then when he came on into Smyrna, he worked at the Hager store. Then he started working with the bank, with Mr. Hibbett. And then his brother passed away at 29. Granddaddy had three sons, Bill, Frank, and Johnny. And then his brother had three sons, James Earl, Ben, and Wallace. So with the six men, we had a large family expanded, but it shrunk back down now pretty small. But there was a lot of the Barnett name because there were so many of them here in town doing so many jobs. Tell the different type of businesses that they were um, in. Uncle Bill, he did several things. He started out, I think, after the war opened a meat locker there where the buy right was and had a big marquee, Barnett's. Then him and Thurman got together, and I think Thurman and Bud Kilgrove after that. And then he opened a real estate office and did some auctioning in real estate. Uncle Frank was in a motor pool, maybe, but he had, it was a Barnett Motors, and they were, do you remember what kind of cars Denny he sold? I think it just had a, I don't think they had a brand, did they? Uh, it was something weird. Willis? Like Hudson's or something like that. I don't believe it was Willis. Anyway, there was gas pumps right there where you crossed the Hart's Branch, and uh, it had the grease pits, and he did Barnett Supply, which is lumber and paint company after that. My father was in the furniture business, Barnett Furniture Company. And uh, Ben worked at the bank. James Earl worked on the air base and at the water plant and uh, for the Smyrna. And then uh, I understand that Wallace, there Sky Harbor, could fly, and supposedly nobody knew any better pilots than him, but for their physical properties or whatever, he could not get in the service and fly the planes. But uh, then that started with the two main ones down to six, and then. But your granddaddy operated one of our banks here in town. He was cashier. He's, I've got a $10 bill here. It was 1929. They'd taken up most monies, and it is a, let's see, national bank currency. And it's got the bank's name, and when they came to the banks, and you can find them from all kind of banks, but this is First National Bank Smyrna, the cashier, Jay and Barnett had to sign it, and the president, W.C. Hibbett, had to sign it. They're not that rare to find these, but to, for somebody to find one from our bank in 1929, we were real proud to get it. And 
you see we had it framed and keeping it. Tommy, tell us about what the Hart family did here in town. Well, you know, uh, people want, but when I tell them my last name is Hart, the first thing they ask me is, is the creek named after you? Yeah. Well, no, it's not. And, uh, you know, that's one thing I've tried to get replaced around here is to make that correct. Uh, it's called, the sign says Hart's, H-A-R-T-S, branch. Well, that is correct, but misspelled. And it has nothing to do with my family. If it did, it would have to be an apostrophe S but it's not that at all. Actually, the name is Hartz, H-A-R-T-Z. And, and that was, I think, Hartz was a German name that it was Hartzenbrenner or something, you know. But actually, it's, it's not that. But my my daddy used to be the fire chief here when we had a volunteer fire department after the base got here. I, I don't know much about the years and all that, but W. E. Carter took his place, and we used to answer the uh, when everybody anybody called with a fire. It the fire phone was in our house, and it's the same number as. Uh, you would dial, You would get if you dialed City Hall four five nine two five five three, and that that number just, you know, that was the fire department number. And uh, you know, I learned to, I learned to read and write before I was in school because somebody had to answer that fire phone. Daddy was at work down to, behind the house. And my mother, she could do it, but it was always fun for me to answer the phone and run down there and tell them where the fire was. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of responsibility on a small kid. You know, I was five or six years old, and when they, they'd, they'd just tell me whose house it was, and I knew the address, and they'd run down there. But, I guess you got paid a lot, didn't you? Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I'm still reaping the benefits <laughs> of it. Board, yeah. You got a room and board, didn't we? Yeah. Hey. And uh, when I'd go down, when my, when my grandfather was a city clerk, I'd go down and sit with him. And if the fire line, if, if we got a call uh, down there saying that there was a fire, he'd let me go ring it. Sa uh, hit the, the bell. button to make the... Siring go off. Yeah. yeah, that was. But then your dad, what type of business was he in? Well, he he started out uh, wanting to be a commercial artist, and uh, during the World War uh, Two, uh, most of the people uh, were in the service. My dad had two busted eardrums. People didn't know that. That's one of the reasons he was always so loud, because he couldn't hear himself talk. So he, he didn't have to go to the service. And he took, uh, he, he had a friend that uh, went to the service and they wanted somebody to take his place at a printing shop that Robert Gwynn owned. So my dad went down and took Robert's place uh, while he was in Japan, actually, in World War II. And, uh, you know, that went along till the war was over and everybody came home. And uh, in 47, my dad started a printing shop over there on uh, Dudley Street, in, right behind the old house there. And then uh, about 51, he built a concrete block building that's right there behind the senior citizens. It's, uh, it's some kind of construction Martin. company working Martin out of there now. Martin Construction. Yeah. And I, you know, it was, it was a successful business for uh, 40 years and the last 10 uh, after computers and hard drives came around it was just you just didn't have the volume that you used to have to uh, 
produce to make any money. It just wasn't profitable to be in that business anymore at that scale. But I can recall going to, to yours and your dad's place there, and, and you did a lot of printing for all the businesses in town. And, and, and when I would run for city office, your dad would do my cards and, and my... He had a big picture of you at yeah. one time on yeah. a poster. Yeah, sure. one, one of the wanted guys. I was going to say, did it say wanted? Did you have a was it at relative post stove steam engine? Seemed like I've seen a picture of a... Uh, my dad had some steam engines, and I gave them to Mike. No, no, the big one coming through oh, town. Oh, yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. was that a grandfather? That was my grandfather. He worked for the NC in St. L uh, before he pretty much retired and became the Smyrna City clerk. But he worked for the actual railroad. Uh, he was an engineer. Probably. Well, I don't know for okay. sure, but I know when that, when that locomotive was parked there, Somebody took his picture, <laughs> and that, that's the only thing I know for sure is what I see. Tommy, what was your hobbies, your and your dad's hobby that y'all had? Well, uh, my dad, uh, he was more into it than I was at the start. Uh, he liked the pony business, the pony, uh, small, not, not the tiny pony, uh, miniature horses, they call them. But Shetland ponies, that was a booming thing back in the mid-50s. And, you know, these guys that were the pioneers of the business, they'd, uh, they'd get together and devise a plan that we're going to sell 40 head of animals here and we're going to buy, we're going to pay enormous prices to each other for these animals with the lure that this will be a way for us to make big money when outsiders come in to buy. And so, uh, you know, it was quite a scheme really what it was, but uh, a lot of people bit the bullet on it. My dad was one of them. Of course, we, we bred and showed them for 20 years and then, uh, Times changed, uh, gasoline got expensive, and we quit. And then I started again in the late 90s. And uh, I've, ha I've had a total of six national champions. And uh, I've still got two old ponies uh, up there in the barn right now. One of them's 25 and the other one's 30. And uh, I've just always had them, so. They're your pets. Okay. Well, they're really not pets. They're they're a little more high strung. Uh, they're they they're, get they get to eat what they want. Uh, no, they eat what I give them. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then a little earlier during the time, the Hoover's was around, Denny, and then tell us uh, about the type of business your dad was in, and then where the farm was, and the location of this building, and all of that. A little background before I get to the Hoovers is that the Kings, Johnses, and Hoovers were all kin folks. Ernie Johns was my second cousin. Frank Johns was a cousin. My <coughs> my grandmother, Bessie King, was the daughter of William King, which was the first undertaker in Smyrna, and Huey King, and also uh, her sister married into the Johns family. So Ernie's grandmother and my grandmother were sisters. And so the Kings, Hoovers, and Johns are all relatives here in Smyrna. <clears throat> the Hoovers migrated after the Revolutionary War to Beach Grove and Hoover's Crossroad and Hoover yeah. Gap and the old family cemeteries down there and got a Revolutionary Grant. Uh, Originally, my granddaddy and his daddy and family were from Bell Buckle. And I've got ledger books from 1867 of, of Uncle Arthur's grocery store in Bell Buckle with all the people that came in and traded. So I've got uh, 
<clears throat> so we moved from Bedford County into Smyrna. Kings came out of Nolensville, Uncle William King, over here when Smyrna started. And the family business, I'd have been a fifth generation if I'd have taken the business over. But I was kind of like a boy growing up on a farm that had been milking cows for 20 years, and he wanted to get away from milking cows. So I'd been in the funeral business for 20 years when I was 21 years old. And so I decided to get out of the funeral business. <laughs> but uh, and after, <coughs> as far as my mother's side of the family, were Denny's, and that's where I got my middle name. And he was a businessman in Nashville, owned a Nixon Machinery Company, and worked for the state for a while. And they had a cabin at Sulphur Springs. And when I was a year or two old, I spent a lot of time over there at Old Sulphur Springs on the river. Uh, but other than that, just grew up in Smyrna. It's a small, independent town. A lot of, like Tommy was saying, <clears throat> I had a lot of responsibilities. First time I helped him bomb my body, I can remember I was about six years old, standing on Coca-Cola crates so I could get up high enough to help Daddy. But that's what was expected of me. Uh, Daddy had uh, a farm, which we'll get to in a minute, which was right here. He also built houses, him and Pete Lee, Anybody, y'all yeah. know who Pete Lee was. Dad and Pete built a lot of houses together in Smyrna and uh, raised cattle, raised farm, hogs. Our hog lot's right here where the car dealership is, <laughs> two block, two doors down. That's where our old hog, that's where our pond was that we raised hogs. <laughs> uh, but uh, just grew up doing, and then I started driving ambulance when I was about 12 or 13 because Back then, the funeral homes ran all the wrecks, and they ran all the people until the what mid '60s, I guess, when they started the EMTs. We had a probably '70. <coughs> Woodfin and Moore and, and Jennings and Ayers ran south side of Rutherford County. We ran this end of Rutherford County and part of Davidson County as far as being hooked into the highway patrol. We were hooked in with the highway patrol, and had any time there was a wreck or emergencies, we got called. I had two ambulances. I usually drive, I had a state license to drive an emergency vehicle at 13 years old. So, I mean, that's the kind of responsibility you had back, back in there. Back Did in the you day. have your own private telephone back then or not? Or did you have a public telephone for we the people call? Well, I know y'all are going to laugh about this, but we all had the same phone back when I was growing up. That was, the five la that was the five line. ladies that sat in the White House at the end of the party line <laughs> down there at John Hartman's place and put the, put the things in. So we all, right all none of us, we just rang a, I understand rang that, a thing. That was Somebody's, right there behind the sign shop. Yeah, now, right, right behind the sign yeah. shop was the first telephone office. Then we went to a regular three digit, four digit number. And then we went, then when they built the one across from Mother and Daddy's house on Division Street. Then they the, shut down the little office. The first, uh, the first phone we had at the printing shop in 1947, the number was six seven J. I got a six seven J, a six eight J, or something like that on some of Daddy's advertisements uh -huh. for the funeral home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you had numbers and the alphabet. Yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. That was before you had dial tone. That's when you just went to like a switchboard stick in. So where City Hall is located today, where we sitting, was part of the Hoover Farm? Right. Gene and Jim, you know, yeah. Ross, yeah. had a little house right by where we were sitting. We had two rental houses right here. Jim and Gene, when they first got married, late fall of 60, they moved into the first little house right here. Went all the way to the creek. Yeah, it went, it went from the railroad track to the mill to the creek. It's 90, 90 acres right in here. And the creek that we're talking about is across from where Karen's custody is today. Yeah, the Stewart's Creek. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so then his family owned all this where we're sitting, sitting today. And from here he went up to Del Hall, I mean up to, uh, up on the farm, up at Hoover Hill on Del Thomas. So you, you can see that we've talked about what Smyrna used to be. And, and we have an uh, uh, association here in town, SIMA that works real good with a local business. 
and also Ron Alley, who came later on in the late 90s, which was a long time ago, but yet nothing compared to what we've been talking about here. And, and Ron and, and his group are working to help revitalize downtown Smyrna, where the depot is and where all these businesses that you, your families was talking about. What are some of the plans that you hope to accomplish in the future, Ron? Well, we've, we've been real thankful to work with the town to, and the council and uh, over the years that we've been here. Uh, well, we started Carpe Artista in 2011, so we're on our 10th anniversary. Um, and there, there was a great structure there historically um, when, um, when we started Carpe Artista, but we just knew that there were things that we could bring the arts and activity and culture in to help uh, potentially bring attention back to it from a broader sense. When I came in 95, just to show you the, the change in the, uh, um, the population of the time, I think uh, the population of the town was between 16 and 17,000. So in the 20, close to 25 years that I've been here, we've seen that more than double. Um, so, uh, but I've always realized that, that that's the origins of, of the town of Smyrna, where it started, right there around the, the depot and the train track. And so, um, uh, love that area. Uh, have, we've tried to um, bring some, uh, help bring some events in, in uh, uh, cooperation and partnership with town and other organizations with SIMA and, um, and try to bring attention back to it, you know. Um, and people to come and make that a, a destination spot where they want to come and find out about the history. Mr. Denny and I have talked to, about uh, even trying to possibly in the future create some markers and things that would create a kind of a historic walk and give people an idea of where, what the origins of those buildings and what's happened uh, with those buildings since they were built and how that's transitioned to today. So um, I think key to that area is preserving the feel, okay? Not necessarily preserving it totally, but it preserving that feel of, of the history and the culture of the town of Smyrna as it, as it brings some modern elements to kind of an ancient modern feel that is appealing you know, to, uh, to a broader segment of our, our community and bring them into that area. But where, where Ron's rest, uh, cafe is today was our classic cleaners, and we mentioned the Coleman's a while ago, having his, Mr. Earl having his office there in classic cleaners, uh, and then right down the street, he has the, uh, what was now as Maribyrn Weekly, and he's kind of converted it into an art center, or, or yeah, what, what do you have? We have plans for doing that more so, even. Yeah. Um, and, so. and Raquel, you you really involved with with that, with with the council, with the art, with the arts. So we we do have an arts and cultural commission or committee now that we are working with, and we are working. Um, Ron is a part of that now, and um, we are working to bring more arts related, more cultural related. Um, um, events and just notice and uh, recognition to um, to Smyrna and to the depot district. Um, we actually as a council have several projects that we are working on. Um, last year we uh, worked with um, the Tennessee Department of Tourist Development and we were able to get a grant to build the canopy and the seating that is at the depot now. Um, we also have a project that we're working with CSX Railroad um, on the Washington Street and we're building, uh, also working with them to get a walkway built for pedestrians so that we, as we grow and bring in more cultural events that it's a safe place for citizens to, to, to walk. Um, we also have several projects um, like the Alta Depot that we have a de developer and you talked about that earlier. Um, that is going to bring some uh, livability downtown. 
Um, and we also have um, a couple of other projects. We have uh, a mobility project that's over on Lowry, right around the railroad tracks, that we're working to do some improvements on as well. So, so we are partnering with um, with Carpe and um, other uh, citizens and businesses to improve that area because we also want to see it grow and become better. So, you know, I have a. Uh Speaking of that, there there is a lot of legend in Smyrna, and you would probably, and you would, I'm almost sure you would know who I'm talking about. But you know the the music scene, the Mississippi Delta, and all that. You know Smyrna had its own blues man. Did you know that? Do you know that? He used to sit downtown in front of Moore's Market on the weekends and play what we call now bottleneck guitar with his pocket knife and sing the blues. And he had a tin cup on the end of his guitar and his name was Willie Lewis. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, Mr. Willie Lewis. Mm -hmm. By what time was that, Tommy? You recall? Oh, early fifties. Early fifties. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Was Moore's Market there then, or who was there? Moore's Market was there, and it was Thurman Francis next yeah. door. Yeah. Yeah. Need to find out more about Mr. Blue. Yeah, Lewis. that. Uh, you know, it uh, it transcends a huge musical sure. scene. Absolutely. He had a marker, like he was talking about markers. Markers bring it information out to the public would be great. And another thing that you do that my wife really loves is that on the weekends during the summertime on Saturday mornings is the farmer's market where, where different people can bring not only food but crafts and, and the vegetables and those type of things. And, and, and Raquel mentioned uh, the other activities. You probably have five or six different activities that goes on during the calendar year that, that utilize that parking lot in the, in the depot. Yeah. Simply Smyrna is a big one. Uh, kind of, it's like a, a summer season. Mm -hmm. It starts with uh, the Simply Smyrna celebration, which then has other arts uh, activities and celebrations through the month of June, and goes all the way through with the, the um, barbecue festival, with the uh, parks and recreation, and um, and then kind of finishes up with depot days at the end of September. So a lot of summer activity in that area. But then there's, there's Christmas celebration and we're uh, uh, having conversations about the uh, haunting at 98 in October, like ghost story tours yeah. uh, for that area and developing that a bit more. So those are cultural things, but they have an artistic feel to them too but they're dependent upon, you know, coming into that area and experiencing the environment. So it has a lot to do with, you know, bringing people into that environment. You mentioned the ghost. I recall we mentioned Medalone Home earlier when the Medalone Home was vacated and before it was torn down, the uh, one of the local clubs here in town for a money raiser would have haunted house down there. And, and it was uh, it was a haunted house, all right. I mean, they would they would scare you to death down there. <laughs> the uh, car shows they haven't had them in a while. Uh, there's it usually a company's depot days. Okay. So there's a uh, there's one that'll be happening the last weekend in September. Yeah, 24th and 25th. I a lot of classic today. cars are down there. Classic <laughs> cars and stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, that usually happens on Friday night, and then Depot Days, um, the you know vendors and food vendors and all that on Saturday. So y'all don't know how to you don't know how to celebrate Halloween. We used to turn a toilet upside down and drag it around downtown Smyrna, an outhouse. Well, we're gonna have to try that, I guess. <laughs> See, the EPA be after you. That was, and Debbie Carter would run us down. Yeah. And he'd turn, turn us in. Miss Steve, well, you was going to say something? I wanted to know who was the first black person to hold a position with the city, job, a job with the city? As far as elected official, I would say probably Raquel. Maybe Raquel. But man, as Barnes. far as appointed or working. Keita Barnes. She was voted judge. Who? Keita Barnes. Oh, Keita Barnes. Oh. Okay, yeah, I forgot about Miss Keita, yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. 
Miss Patsy, we're getting ready to wind it up. Anything else you want to bring up or say? No, I think this has been really good. We've a lot more information. Um, I'm always intrigued by the things these folks bring, and John, uh, John, you've got a stack of stuff down there, and and these pictures over here that uh, Mr. Gwynn did, Jimmy Gwynn did. I'd forgotten about the fact yeah. that he he liked to sketch and and draw pictures. So was he a member been, of your senior citizens at one time? Was he okay? Was he a member of your no, senior? No, Louise was. Louise, Louise. yeah, okay. I was. Yeah, Louise uh, was great. She um, she took over writing the, the newsletter for me one, which was a big help because I was trying to write the newsletter. And Jimmy's wife, Louise. Mm -hmm. You know, she was from Nashville, mm -hmm. and uh, she had the most unusual brogue. As she did. Jeez. And uh, in fact, we went down there to see Uncle Jimmy, a couple of my buddies, when I was oh, 20 years old. Jimmy was an entertainer mm -hmm. and used to like to take people around because that just really energized mm -hmm. him. And uh, But his wife, Louise, had the most unusual West Nashville accent. And uh, it was cold that day, and J Jimmy had been dreading taking the trash out. And every few minutes, Louise would tell Jimmy to take the trash out. Jimmy couldn't hear much anyway. And anyway, she, she'd been dogging him about taking the trash out, and Louise, in her unmistakable voice, uh, yelled at us from the kitchen, do you boys want some popcorn? <laughs> Did it scare you? No, but Jimmy said, I told her I ain't taking no trash out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Is that all he said? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, one little point I'd like to, uh... Bring out? Whatever. Uh... When I turned eight years old, I wanted to play Little League Baseball. We had two teams, the Braves and the Yankees. You know who the coaches were? Uh, uh, Dixon and Fred Johnson. Right. And uh, then the next year, they added two more teams, the Tigers and the Cardinals. And we had three teams everybody could play, so that made pretty good. The first year I played, I was so little that they didn't have a uniform that I could wear. And me and Mama went to W.T. Grant's store down on 5th and 4th or whatever, 6th and Church, and I bought a pair of children's pajamas that were fashioned like a baseball suit. Uh, felt button down and that's what I wore my first year was a pair of pajamas on the field. Did you let anybody know? Uh, I don't know if I did or not. <laughs> now, all I know is uh, they'd let me play if either, if either uh, there wasn't a chance of winning yeah. or if there wasn't a chance of losing. So, Tommy showed me a picture in an annual. It was Coach Holland and he's the mascot of the football team, what year was it? 58. 58. Yeah. But a little bitty boy between the players' knees almost to low standing. I didn't realize we had mascots. I had a football suit just like the high school had. Of course, I, you live right next to the field. Oh, yeah, you could tell when they're practicing. All you had to do is look out the window <laughs> and listen. Denny, one anything more, you want to cover yep, that we haven't covered? One more trivia question okay. for you people. Where was the racetrack? located that Andrew Jackson ran his famous horse on in Smyrna. Was it the steeplechase when they did nope. it? Race track, the, horse racing track. Yeah. Is that on the base, wasn't it? No. Nope. What about up at Nice's? I got a picture, I got a picture right in there of where it was. Was it Nice's Mill? Nope. Nope. You know where Frank John's house is? Yeah. And the reason I'm saying this, they're getting ready to, nobody, there's nothing out there so people don't know this, but as far as putting plaques out, Andrew Jackson practiced law in 1812 at Jefferson, when Jefferson was the capital. capital. Mm -hmm. 
and they had a racetrack right in front of Frank Johns's house where the curve, the old Jefferson Pike curved. Mm -hmm. And on the map it says racetrack. Well, Andrew Jackson raced his horses there, mm -hmm. along with Mr. Bell, uh, Mr. Weekly, the people, all the old men that owned some of all that property back in the early 1800s. But we did have a, a racetrack here right. in Smyrna, horse racetrack, about 1812. I thought he was going to And it's going to be, the thing about it is, even if we had something, the new four lane, which, gosh, mm -hmm. thankful we got <laughs> coming in, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take out that majority of where that little racetrack was at one time. I thought maybe he was going to bring up our car racetrack that used to no, be right up, up, up on the hill up there. Yeah. But I got a poster at the shop from the 1941, 1939 to 40 horse show in Smyrna. You know where it was and how you got to it? There again, I'm going to guess nice as meal. No. No. Went up Hazelwood to where Mr. Fergus lived. Okay. You parked over in the field where the new car Ms. place Flowers. is. Miss Flowers. Miss Flowers' yard. And you walk between where Ben lived, where the preacher lives now, and uh, Fergus' house, up to where the football field was. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that, Ridley Street wasn't there. Yeah. But that's where a horse show was held back where old football field was wow. when we went to high school. It's where the pond is now. I copied some papers off the Facebook, but there was a steeplechase in Smyrna, like yeah. Edith Barnett, 10-year-old show, all the old names, and they would leave Smyrna and go all the way out to like Rockvale and Big Circle in like a one-hour lap. And when the war started, all the boys left. So they stopped it and never started it again, but it was a big celebration with a lot of, the governor would come open it up and uh, Bill Carpenter had it on his page at one time. I think I made some copies of the pages, but several names of the old families were had ponies and all entered in the thing. Another right. thing is we had a famous artist that lived in Smyrna. Not artist, but writer. Mr. Braden Cheney. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Mm -hmm. He lived on Oak Street in the big old home place over there. His wife was a real famous musician, too. But he lived about half the time in New York and half the time here in Smyrna. During the Second World War, they opened their yard up every Saturday and Sunday for the USO. And all the, and they used to go out, the guys from the base would come over there, and they'd serve them cookies and crackers, ice cream, stuff. Luckily, all the kids in Smyrna, which wasn't many of us, including Bud, we went in Billie Jean, we would get to go over there on Saturdays and get lemonade and cookies when they were serving the, 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 the guys from the base. But that was old USO. But this is one, this is a 1958 first edition that one of the books he wrote. But Mr. Cheney was a well-known writer, and not just in Smyrna, but he lived here in Smyrna. He used to write a lot of the governor's speeches. He wrote, and the president's speeches and people in Congress and, and the governor's speeches and all. Does anybody know who lives there now? No, but uh, somebody told me yesterday they got the thing, they got the house up for sale for a million three. That's right. There you go, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Ron, anything we hadn't covered you'd like to bring out? Just uh, looking forward to seeing how things continue to, to progress and being a part of it. I'm grateful to be here. You know, I'm not a native of Smyrna, but Smyrna is where we chosen to make our home the last 25 years because we love this community. Well, we just, we're glad that you're willing to take the tiger by the tail and carry it on. Well, we're grateful just to have the opportunity. He doesn't, he, i tell you the truth, because he runs when he gets out of his truck because he don't want to listen to me. Oh, is that <laughs> <it>? <laughs> Dennis, Dennis off his shop away from home it's right behind where Ron goes to work every day, so they see each other every day. I love it, honestly. I love finding out more. So Tell them what that building was, Denny. What? That building really was a cold storage building for the cleaners back during the 50s. 57, Daddy bought it. There's a rumor out that we kept bodies in there, but that never <laughs> happened. <laughs> we used it for a welding shop for our farm equipment because when we had the big farm up on... Del Thomas. And and when you're done with it, I'd love to make a pottery shop out of it. <laughs> oh, wow. There's two or three people left to I have know. it right now. But I know. It's getting close. <laughs>
Raquel, anything you'd like to add? To yes. Okay. Actually, I've got a couple of things. So some, some trivia. Um, <laughs> there's actually another famous artist that was born here, um, excuse me, a, a writer. And her name is Patricia McKissick. And we actually celebrated her during part of the um, Arts uh, Commission's um, event back in June. But she actually has written over a, a hundred um, children's books. She was a black author and her name is Patricia McKissick and she was born here in Smyrna, Tennessee. And she's very famous for, she's gotten a lot of awards um, How related to her be? writing. She was born here August the 9th, 1944, and she passed away on April the 7th of 2017. Um, she lived here and then she moved to Nashville and then she actually made her, her living with her, and her husband is a writer as well, um, but they moved to Missouri. But um, she was born here in Smyrna, Tennessee. What family was she associated with? Um, Do you recall? The, the McKissick's. The baby and, name anywhere. Yeah. Uh, that it that um, let's see I do have it because actually it was someone that we also celebrated this year this year Smyrna had its first Juneteenth celebration as well and we celebrated famous individuals born in the town of Smyrna and she was one of those that we celebrated um, but we also celebrated um, another famous artist his name was Gregory Ridley and I don't know if you know yeah. him he's a sculptor and a painter um, and he was born here in the town of Smyrna as well. Um, trying to find her maiden name. And some of her books were about her childhood stories too. Right. Yes. It was Carwell. Patricia Leanne Carwell McKissick is her name. Carwell. Carwell. Never heard of him. And um, let's see. We actually have an NBA player that was also born here. I don't know that you knew if anyone knew that an NBA uh, basketball player that was born here in the town of Smyrna. Does, um, it, does it mention anything? Is, was her father a member in the service? That's it what. didn't mention. Um, but I can let you see the booklet that we put together. So for our first Juneteenth um, celebration, we celebrated famous people that were born here in Smyrna, and there were five actually um, that are well known. And actually one of them is Miss um, Marion's grandson. Um, he's a, a famous musician, rapper, and artist, and he pr has a production company um, that he um, that he uh, started. And then we also have um, another uh, NFL player that was born here in the town of Smyrna. His name is Jalen Ramsey. Oh yeah. I don't know if any of you yeah, all. He's playing today. Yeah. Yeah. He was born here in the town of Smyrna. Yeah. And then we have the NBA player Paul Stanford Thompson who played in the NBA, and then he also went and played overseas as well. So we, we actually have quite a, a rich history here in the town of Smyrna. Well, um, you never know who your next door neighbor is. You don't, you, know, you people don't. People don't know that anymore, and they don't want to. Well, uh, we actually put together a booklet so that we could um, record some of this history so that people who come behind us will know. And one of the th other um, items that we did is we celebrated uh, service uh, African American service men and women who were born here in the town of Smyrna, and we came up with 65. 65. And so we have their names and their pictures um, included in our booklet. So um, that's some more Smyrna trivia that um, I think needs to be uh, recorded and handed down as well. And yes, ma'am. The name of the the, uh, the author Patricia McKissick. McKissick. She would be my age because I, I was born in 44 and I'll be 77. M-I-M-C-K-I-S-S-A-K. -S -S and I'll give you this with that information in it. We want all of this history to be told. So, And some of the things that you were, you were mentioning about the Smyrna Senior Center, senior, well, it's the Smyrna Activity Center now. Senior Activity Center. And my, grand, my great grandmother used to go there. Her name was Hattie Dillard. And so my... Um, so we, we talk about my grandmother who is Nora Peebles and that's her married name, but her maiden name was Dillard. And so, and I, you were talking about uh, older things and I actually have a copy of the deed from where my great grandmother, Hattie Dillard's grandmother, Josephine Gregory, bought the property off of Nora Peebles Lane back in 1907. So I was able to find the deed for when that purchase was made and it was actually two acres at the time and it was $35 for the oh, two wow. acres. Wow. 
And back during that time, the main highway was the old highway, which was right up the road from where you're talking about. Yes. This main, this 41 wasn't here then. In 1937, this 90 acres was sitting on. Daddy bought it for $1,750. <laughs> this whole area from the creek through from the railroad down, $1,700. I got the deed on it. Yeah, well, I'm not mistaken, too, the corner of where Chief Arnold lives now, that was senior center when it first started. Yeah. They had the rooms big. And well, it first started in, in the Methodist Church for about okay. two years, and then we, we, we moved to that house. This lady here is the one that started that right there. In the Nance yeah. house and Stella's. Miss mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thee, anything you need to say that we haven't been said? No, it's a lot been said, and I've learned a lot. <laughs> we always learn. <laughs> Don't to say. <laughs> Tell them about that, because we were talking about Damon Street. So what's your family's history here? Because I don't think you said oh. that earlier. What's your, your, your people? Yeah, we are, my grandmother, them on from the Mason Tucker yeah. all the way to Todd Lane. That was the property going all the way over there. And you know, David Hughes School is in yeah. there between. So all of those miles live there, but then it ended up naming the street. Yeah, Mason Tucker. Were you part of the Miles? Right, right yeah. Jody Miles. Jody. That was my uncle. Okay. Did you ever go swimming in the rock quarry down there? Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> I bet these people don't even know what we're no, talking we about, did We'd go swimming and then we'd come home and we'd swim in our clothes and, and we'd drive the time we got home and yeah. they knew we'd been in the water because our clothes would be kind of muddy looking. So I told you not to go swimming in that creek. <laughs> Did you ever go up in Mr. Toombs' water and pond and go swimming? Yeah, we went up there too. <laughs> I swimming. bet they don't know what we're talking about there, do they? No, that's true. <laughs> Denny's been around a long time, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> hey, we used, to, we used to ride bicycles. There was two or three of us. We'd go down here to the, on Sam Davis Road, go down the hill to the creek. It was real steep down there. And to the right was a place about as big as the spot here in between the tables that was deep enough to actually swim you know it was that deep you could year round uh yeah it didn't change well. you know and uh you know every now and then we'd hear something strange we'd think what is that and we got out and walked upstream that's where the sewer dumped into the creek. <laughs> when we were swimming in the... <laughs> was that your last day you swam? That was the last time we tried that. <laughs> but, you know, people were tougher back in those days yeah. than they are we now. Yeah. Sometimes behind the dairy dip, that odor would come out of the creek right yeah. there real bad. <laughs> well, Miss Patsy and Miss Thee and I really appreciate y'all coming today and I, I believe that the citizens of Smyrna, once this here is where they can see it, will learn something about what Smyrna used to be. Thank you very much. <laughs>